Hello everybody and welcome back to The Way That I See It. My name is Lucy Superfox and this is my podcast. So I'm just back from Greece. I had a great weekend in Athens. It was lush to just get away, take some time out, give myself some perspective, you know, give myself like a zoom out of life. And I think what happens when you're self-employed and I'm sure anybody who's self-employed listening to this will resonate or watching this on YouTube will resonate in the fact that when we're busy self-employed human beings we are often in the doing right all the time and actually what's really important and what I have learned to be able to do is like the importance of zooming out and being able to take a step back being able to pull back just for a minute to just remind ourselves why we started in the first place so much of the time like there's going to be an element of you that became self-employed because you wanted life on your own terms because you were really passionate about the thing that you do or maybe this is even your job right maybe you are super passionate about what it is that you do for work but the challenge is that when we're in it when we're so in it and we don't zoom out just for a minute what happens is we forget the big picture and to me the big picture is the most important bit if you've lost sense of the big picture of why you're doing anything in life and trust me this has been me like I have been this person then what's going to start to happen is things are going to start to slide in the opposite direction because when we lose the vision we lose it's like turning off the sat nav and hoping for the best right and the vision is not about achieving more stuff and things right it's not about getting to a specific point or a specific day or a specific amount of money because everything as we know is transient is always moving is always changing but for me it's about always having something to strive for and maybe at this point in your entrepreneurial journey the thing that you're striving for is not actually stuff and things and if it is stuff and things amazing I'm also that person too I love a good you know handbag (laughs) I love a nice car and I love a nice house right but maybe what you're striving for right now is impact maybe you're in a point or a pivot where actually what you're finding is think you know like striving for those stuff and things isn't motivating you the same way it used to and I've definitely been there too and so what I always urge people to do is when they're so in the detail all the time is to make that time to zoom out to step back to really look at the big vision so they can set the direction set the intention of where they want to go next so yeah coming back from Greece has been an absolute like it's been a life-saving weekend basically so what I wanted to share with you guys tonight is a little bit about what well, two things. So number one is the title of this podcast, which is if I gave you 10,000 pounds and I want to talk about that in a minute. And the second one is how a tiny shift in perception can change it all. So much of the time we think that it's all about one direction, one way, one approach, one theory, one way to live right you know you've got to be keto you've got to be whole thing you've got to be this right if it's food with work you've either got to be um 5 a.m club or you've got to be like whatever it is right and I am in the place in my life where I just trust that what's right for one person is right for the next person that as someone's mentor or someone's coach depending on how they work with me that I can provide suggestions and solutions on how things could work for them based on what's worked for me there is not one right way. I The concept of prescribing someone a success plan is just bullshit. And for me, what's really important is people recognize the fact that the only person that can change or determine how successful you are is you, is you. And so what happens is when people sign up with coaches or people sign up with mentors or people sign up in any kind of Uh, growth capacity right is and whether it's free or paid for is kind of irrelevant is what they're doing is putting faith in something else because they don't have enough faith in themselves and I'm not saying don't do it I'm saying it's actually one of the best ways you can ever grow yourself and grow your business because when you put your faith in someone else right especially if they're new to you or especially if they're someone who's got a proven track record which is why we post testimonials it's why we post transformations right when you put your faith in someone else it often allows you to cut out the bullshit noise in your head that says it can't be possible for you and so what I want you to know is that's why we work with coaches, but you take what you what resonates and you leave the rest. And so when you listen to this podcast, you hear me say something that takes you out of the game. I say something like, oh, I spent this much money on a handbag. And you're like, Lucy, that's my rent for a month, right? That When I say that, that's not designed to take you out of the game. That doesn't mean I'm not the right person to listen to, right? It might be that I'm not the right person to listen to, but it might actually, what that is, is that you're not in the place yet where you're ready to hear that. And maybe though you'll never be ready to hear that because that's not who I am, right? But you doesn't mean you can't take value from certain pieces and leave the rest. And so this concept of prescribing one way to success is almost a little bit, um, what's the word? Oh, I want to say something, but it sounds really bad. 
almost a little, well, it's controlling. It's like, this is the only way, must do it my way, my way or the fucking highway. And I hate it. I absolutely hate it. And so what that creates is cookie cutter, right? Now there's nothing wrong with a success blueprint. And I want to be really, really clear. I'm not talking about a strategic success blueprint that gives you a background and a framework and an ideal of how to strive for things. But what I am seeing is utterly painful, especially in the coaching space right now. I'm seeing the same posts from different coaches who are working with the same mentors. And I'm like, you have your own original voice. Why are you using someone else's? And it drives me absolutely nuts. So what I want you to know is there is no one right way to success. So if you've seen a coach scale to 100K, I'm just using some random figures right now. And you're like, right, well, I need to do exactly what they did. No, you don't. No, you don't. What you, if they offer a success blueprint, absolutely go do that. Follow that framework, right? Or you're following someone in the network marketing space and they, you know, got to the top of the company or whatever, or they're a top seller or a top producer, whatever it is, right? And you're like, okay, well, I've got to do exactly what they did. No, you don't. You've just got to do it your way. But the difference is, right? The difference is you have got to, and I talked about this so much in the last podcast, is that you have got to see they are the evidence of what is possible. You can absolutely use some of the tools and the metrics and the success blueprints, like I said, but it's got to be you. It's got to be you because nobody is going to buy into, this is where the perception shift comes in, right? Nobody is going to buy into a copycat version of somebody else. People are only going to buy into an original version of you, right? And so what I really want people to grasp is a tiny, this tiny shift in perception because a tiny shift in perception will change a lot. A tiny shift in perception is this, that success is available to everyone, that wealth is available to everyone, that every opportunity is available to everyone. Let me just repeat that again, okay? Success is available to everyone. Wealth is available to everyone. Opportunity is available to everyone. The decision about whether or not it happens is the decision that you make to decide whether that is going to be a future reality for you. Now, that starts with you deciding what you're available for. It, it starts with you clarifying your vision. It starts with you being sure about where you want to go and who you want to be and what you want to have. And if you don't have those things, you are literally shooting in the dark, right? And then it does feel like you're pushing a snowball uphill, not going in any direction at all. It does feel like it's hard and you're spinning your wheels because you haven't set a clear vision. And so the first thing I want to say to you before I talk about the £10,000 is this. Do you have a clear vision of where you want your business or life to be? Do you have a clear direction of who you want to be and where you want to go? And if the answer is no, that's where you got to start. Because I will tell you this, most people, and this is why I'm using this £10,000 example. When I say to people, what would you like to change in your financial reality? Most people say this to me, I want more money. And I could say how much, and some people will know the answer and some people won't. But if I then say to somebody, if I gave you £10,000 today, what would you do with it? Most people have a list of things they would spend it on but they haven't thought of a way that that £10,000 would change their life for the long term. The reality is you can do a lot with £10,000 that could transform your financial reality forever. Now, this is not me saying that you all need to become, you know, super uh, knowledgeable in every element of wealth management, right? Because I am absolutely not. What The reason I'm saying this is because if the only thing that you would do with that £10,000, and be honest with yourself, when I ask you that question, right? is spend it on stuff and things. And look, I love stuff and things, like I said, that you've really got to ask yourself, A, what do you want more money really for? And B, are you the person you need to be to be earning at that level? So what I see a lot of is this, is people thinking, and I've been this person, so I said everything from experience, right? I've been this person where I have had an amount of money in my head and I manifest that amount of money. I always manifest the amount of money I'm supposed to manifest, right? Because I do the manifestation steps that I've talked about in so many previous episodes, right? And I decide what I want. I get rid of any noise since I can't have it. I take inspired action and I trust the process and it always comes. And sometimes it comes in the funniest ways, like I've shared in some of my podcasts, you know, one called Funny Universal Stories, right? And I have manifested money all the time. And I trust the money's going to come. I truly trust it's going to come. But the difference about whether or not I have to move into what I call panic manifestation of, oh my God, I need 20,000 pounds. Oh my God, I need 10,000 pounds. Oh my God, I need 1,000 pounds. Oh my God, I need 5,000 pounds. Whatever it is, is actually because in those moments, I wasn't necessarily doing the work to transform who I actually was with money. And therefore I had to go and fall back again into, I need to manifest a fixed amount of money. So the reason I'm saying this is this, the 10,000 pounds 
how did you feel? Did you feel like, oh my God, yeah, absolutely. I'm totally ready to have this 10,000 pounds. What I'm going to do is I want to do that with that, and put that in savings and that's for that and that's for that. I've been actually thinking about manifest this money and you're like, cool. And it doesn't feel like a big deal or is it a big deal? Because if it's a big deal, right? And you're saying you want to earn 10,000 pounds on the regular extra, whether that's over three months or over a year, there is work to be done in your money mindset for that to be a permanent or an ongoing reality. Because the challenge that you will find is that when money feels elusive and exciting and like, oh my God, a thousand pounds, 10,000 pounds is you are not, you're almost not a match for it. Because when there is such big emotion, there's also big pressure and big attachment. And when there's big attachment and big pressure, what we actually do is we block the manifestation. Here's why. When we are excited by an ideal of something, and it's not to say I don't need to be excited about your manifestations and your dreams and goals and desires, right? But when we are excited about something as something that would never happen to us, you have to understand that the undercurrent belief there is that that would never happen to me. Whereas when you are like, oh my God, it's done, it's happening, it's totally happening, I can trust it, I can feel it, it's calm, it's here. It's almost like a level of acceptance in excitement, it's like a calm effort version. You are then basically saying, it's absolutely happening, um, it's done, the manifestation is done, it's happening. And so I want you to understand the difference between those two things. So if I said to you about the 10,000 pounds, almost element of surprise, excitement, shock, ask yourself, am I really a match for that 10,000 pounds? And it's not because I'm giving away 10,000 pounds today. I mean, like, look, I hope that one day on a podcast, I am absolutely giving away 10,000 pounds to a lucky listener. Like that would be my dream life. There you go. Something else for me to add to my vision. But what I want you to know is that if that feels like a lot of money, but yet you are saying you want to be a hundred K a year coach, well, you want to be doing 10 K months then, don't you? Or you're saying, you know, 10,000 pounds feels like a lot of money and you're saying you want to earn next 10,000 pounds this year. If it feels like it's a lot of money, it's not about to happen in your reality tomorrow. And if it does, you're probably going to manifest the things that need to be spent on it and the money will be gone just like that. It's about leveling up the match of who we are, right? It's about that tiny shift in perception to become the person that earns that money, not to have that money. Does that make sense? Because money's transient. Money doesn't stay. Money's not permanent. Money moves through, right? And in fact, it's necessary. Like you could get that £10,000 and save it, but then your life hasn't changed from having the £10,000, right? You might have an emergency fund now, which is great. But the whole point of emergency fund is that you ideally don't need to spend it unless it's an emergency. And if you're not a match for that money, you'll probably manifest an emergency to have to spend that £10,000. Because we will always get what we're available for. We will always, always get what we're available for. And so your work when it comes to money is about transforming the energy that you have around money and transforming the way you feel about money and transforming your absolutely the level of life that you live at the clothes that you wear the house if that's you know upgrading your life is your thing and it is absolutely for me and it's not because of the necessity to have the stuff and things it's because the way I feel when I dress different the way I feel when my hair is different the way I feel when I wear certain things or wear certain perfumes or carry my LV bag versus a Kate Spade bag whatever right like the way I feel the way I feel changes the way I act, which changes my result, which changes who I am. And when that changes who I am, I change the level of life that I live at. And that's where stuff and things plays a part in the level of life that you live at. But what can happen sometimes is people try to pay their way. So they try to stretch themselves before they're ready. And so this would be where you would be, maybe just get a pay rise at work and you'd spend the whole pay rise in a new car, but actually your level of life hasn't really changed and you spend the whole time worrying about whether you can pay for the new car, right? So then actually all you've done is you're living life at the same level, but you're actually more worried about money and you're likely then to manifest the opposite effect. And so what we've really got to get into is who am I? Like, what is my financial reality telling me about who I am, telling me about what beliefs I hold? And I will tell you, I've got a lot of fucking wealthy friends, right? A lot of wealthy friends, a lot of famous friends, a lot of friends with massive success, great businesses. I've got a lot of friends who own multiple properties. I've got, you know, and I will tell you, that they have been instrumental in my success in becoming wealthy. And I am in the top 3% of uh, female income earners in the UK in, in life, right? I, the averages were released the other day. You know, I earn well over 150 grand a year, which is the top 3% of the UK. And the reality of that is that I transformed to become that person. I didn't become that person when I was born, I wasn't born into money. I didn't have an upbringing, which made me believe that money was easy and that I could manifest money and I could create money and I could be a business owner. I didn't believe any of that, right? That happened over time. But my journey from a 30K salary, right? To 150K plus business, right? Is that 
I became the person I needed to be to be a match for that. I lived life at a level that meant that I made incremental upgrades. And as I made those incremental upgrades, that made me feel like I was an upgraded version of myself. And it's not because wealthy people dress a certain way or do a certain thing or have a certain thing. It's whatever makes you feel wealthy, right? It's whatever you makes you feel wealthy. And it's whatever feels abundant and what feels free with money. And so the reason I give this £10,000 example is the way that you feel when you think about someone handing you £10,000 tells you more about where you are with money than what you're currently writing in your journal. And so I want you to be really honest with yourself about where you actually are in your relationship with money, where you actually are in terms of your state of abundance, where you actually are in your in your financial life. Like, I don't believe debt's bad. I actually don't. I think it's powerful to be able to pay things off over time. I use American Express to basically rack up air miles and points. And then I pay it off every month, right? You have to pay it off every month with American Express um, because credit cards don't make me feel good. I went through a long period of time where I was in a shit ton of credit card debt and I got out of that over time by earning more money. I didn't get out of that by cutting back, right? And this is why this whole thing right now about cutting back makes no fucking sense because I'm like, but then people are still in the same financial situation with just less, right? The key right now is to make more. The key right now is to, and you know, in a recession, this is where most successful multi-million pound businesses would develop, my love. So what I want you to know is that the opportunity, where you are right now with money, the truth about where you are with money right now is not what's in your bank account. It's not what's in your purse. It's not what's in the tin on the side, right? Or in your savings. It's actually the way that you feel when somebody goes to give you money in a situation like I've just explained. So we're going to be doing a big series on money mindset. So if that is your vibe, then make sure to stay tuned. I am so passionate about this topic. It's going to be a lifelong journey for me. I have completely transformed my financial reality. I will absolutely be the first millionaire in my family. And it's not because I need the millions to mean anything about me. I just know that if I can be the person I need to be, then the millions will come. And by doing that, I'm showing that it's possible for any woman that I am stepping into a role that, like I said, I come from very little. You know, my reality as a young child was there was never enough for anything. And to be in a situation right now that I have created through becoming an entrepreneur, through building multiple businesses, through having multiple income streams has meant that I am able to diversify. It meant, means that when one industry is down, I can grow in the other industry. It means that when I'm, you know, feel like I'm, you know, worked myself out. I mean, I'm like, oh, I made all these courses, cool, they feel really good, but I'm not in the ready for me to launch one right now. Cool, I'm gonna go do some event stuff, right? And so what that's allowed me to do is to be able to always be my best self. And look, life doesn't allow us to be our best selves very often. There's always something happening, especially if you're a parent, especially if you've got other stresses and financial pressures. But what I want you to know is that what happens next in your financial reality, what happens next in your business, what happens next in your life is truly up to you. You are the only one that can change what happens next next whether you hire a coach do my money mini mini money mindset course that's coming soon right absolutely your faith in the course is going to be a big step because by putting your faith in doing the course you're then going to be like okay I'm going to change my financial reality and I can pretty much guarantee you some results but I'm guaranteeing that because you're going to put faith in the course and by putting faith in the course you're going to put faith in yourself what I want you to know is this you are the only one that can transform what happens next not the government not the economy not the new prime minister not what nobody else can transform your financial reality what happens next for you is 100 and will always be down to you so just remember to always have that clear vision of where you want to go to just think about where you can make that tiny little shift in perception to how you can transform your financial reality and ultimately take that next step in the direction of your next level life so that was the way that i see it i loved speaking and sharing with you guys tonight this is a topic as you can tell i'm extremely passionate about so if you liked it i'd love for you to like subscribe share it with your friends share it on social media tag me on your story let me know you're watching it i'll give it a reshare and i look forward to seeing you all and speaking to you all on the next episode